So this may or may not be like the fifth or sixth time I've tried to shoot this. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. I have forgotten so much in trying to get this set up. Forgot a fragrance, forgot this, forgot that. 12th time's a charm. Today we're gonna to be talking about some tobacco fragrances. The wacky tobacco. Or no, actually just normal tobacco. Like pipe tobacco. More specifically, 10 sexy tobacco fragrances great for fall and winter, which realistically incorporates probably 95% of tobacco fragrances. Cool weather scents. I'm trying to say tobacco fragrances are usually cool weather fragrances. That's what I'm trying to say. We've got a great lineup here. Some of these are designers, some are niche, even a little bit of indie in here. Some are more expensive, some are cheaper. And I also have a sick full bottle giveaway for one of you guys out there, which is gonna be one that a lot of you are gonna be interested in, so stay tuned for that. And the bottle actually comes courtesy of one of my beast mode gents. This guy sent me the fragrance, still sealed to give away to one of you guys because he had two of them. And he also hooked me up with some samples too. His name is Ryan, so I wanna give him a shout out and make sure to leave a comment below, Ryan, if you watch this, so everybody else can give you a shout out too. Beast mode gents, best in the game. These guys support my channel hardcore. If you wanna be a beast mode gent, click the join button below, check the memberships. You don't have to or anything, but I do appreciate it. And I appreciate you, Ryan, thanks so much. Let's jump into this. Let's get things kicked off with the BR fragrance. And by that, I don't mean Battle Royale. I mean Banana Republic and the fragrance is Tobacco and Tonka Bean. This one has plum, tobacco leaf, Tonka, of course, and also coconut. Yeah, a little bit random, but believe it or not, there are a number of fragrances that make that, that connection. Coconut plus tobacco. The one that this one gets compared to a little bit that came out before this is Zara Rich Warm Addictive, which if you were around when that fragrance came out, then you probably remember the amount of hype that came behind it. People were freaking out out if they didn't have a zara nearby them they were just going mad contacting other people do you have a zara in your city if so can you buy this for me please i'll pay you extra uh i know because i uh, might have might have done that yeah I did. Because at the time that fragrance came out, Zara was not shipping fragrances online. You had to go physically into a store to get it. And some people on uh, the good old eBay were <laughs> taking advantage of that, we could say. I bought this fragrance for $19. I'll let it go for the low, low price of 80. You're welcome. So anyway, that fragrance got hyped heavily and this one shares more than a passing similarity with that fragrance, only this one got no hype. Maybe one of those uh, cases of people saying, eh, you know, I've been there, I've done that with the whole coconut tobacco thing. This is though a really, really nice fragrance. One of the best fragrances in the Banana Republic Icon line. The mixture of Tonka and vanilla with tobacco gives this sweetness throughout the entirety of the fragrance, while the coconut gives it this slight uh, exotic tinge. At its heart, it is going to be more of an evening fragrance, fall and wintertime fragrance, of course, like all of these are and it's really well done. Next up, one of the biggest date night fragrances ever, the one from Dolce & Gabbana. This is the Eau de Parfum. Amber, ginger, cardamom, and grapefruit, some of the other notes going along with that tobacco. Now, some people would say that this is not enough of a tobacco fragrance. They would say that it's more amber and sweet spice than anything else. And if you wanted to take that approach, I wouldn't argue with you. But I think the tobacco really ties everything together here. And when you're talking about sexy tobacco fragrances, I think you got to mention this one because this is one of those fragrances that people will buy and wear specifically just because of the compliment factor and the attractiveness that the fragrance has. You know, people smell it and they lean in and want to smell it again and smell it again because it's just so good, so appealing. Next up, we're going to go with the niche one, an expensive boy right here. This is from the House of Amouage and it is Journeyman. Journeyman? Yeah, just journeyman. Let's call it that. It's got tobacco, incense, Sichuan pepper, cardamom, and leather. This fragrance smells so good. And uh, I kind of made a boo-boo. I've had this fragrance for years, years, and never really talked about it. Actually, I did a video recently, uh, five fragrances that I've never featured on the channel before, and that was one of them. Uh, one of those things that's just kind of an oversight, you know? Like time goes by and you think, surely I've talked about that a few times 
Apparently I haven't. And it deserves it, so I'm making it right by featuring it here today. Journeyman is one of those fragrances that I think in the Amouage lineup sometimes gets kind of lost in the shuffle. So maybe this one, Amouage Epic Man, for example, to a lesser extent, maybe something like Memoir Man. Those fragrances don't seem to carry the same cachet as some of the other Amouage releases that are more well known, like Jubilation 25 or even Reflection Man, or of course, Interlude. But this one absolutely deserves a little more recognition nowadays. I know it's, it's past its prime. It's been out a little bit, but man, when you smell this, it is great. The tobacco, the incense, the rich spices all throughout this thing, it just, it's stunning. You know, it's great during the day, great during the evening, fall or winter. I'd say even early spring with this one. Journeyman, check it out. And that one I'll link at Twisted Lily below. I'll link all these below. Uh, Twisted Lily, you shop there, you know the drill. Gents 10, save yourself 10% off the whole website. They're adding stuff all the time. I think they just added Fragrance Dubois uh, today or yesterday. At least as of when I'm filming, when you watch this in the future, <laughs> It's probably had Fragrance Dubois up there for a minute. I'm throwing it back to another hype beast. This one, when it came out, was everywhere. You could not escape it. It was like Michael Myers in Halloween. You think he's gone, you think he's dead. Boom, nope, pops up right behind you again. The fragrance is 1821 man-made sweet tobacco spirits. So when this came out, the hype was everywhere. Every single person was talking about it. Uh, they gave a bunch of them away. They actually gave me, I think, um, like two or three packages that had the fragrance and the hair products and everything in there to give away. So, you know, it was just video after video after video about it, people posting about it online, really hyped. It's got red wine, vanilla, Tonkin, woods, as some of the notes in the fragrance. One of the funny things is that even though it's called sweet tobacco spirits, Tobacco is not an official note. To be fair though, it does smell like there's a kind of pipe tobacco feeling in here. And if they put pipe tobacco in there as a note, not a single person would question it. So honestly, I'm not sure why they didn't just put it in there as an official note. The red wine in here is going to be one of the things that really is interesting to a lot of different people because that's not something that you see used very often. It gives you this boozy sweetness. It smells really, really nice. It's actually a, a much higher quality fragrance than you might expect. It retails, I think, for about $80 for a 100 ml size bottle, which is not bad. There's a reason that it, it got a good amount of hype because people love sweet tobacco scents and this absolutely kills it at being a sweet tobacco scent without tobacco as an official note. And another thing with 1821 is if you like the fragrance, they have an entire lineup of like body washes and hair products like gels and pomades and clays and deodorant and all kinds of other stuff all done up in that scent. And one last interesting thing about 1821 is actually, I believe it was three years ago, they had emailed me and said, hey, we're gonna be coming out with, I think they said at the time, four, uh, three or four flankers, 1821. They were like, it's gonna be coming out anytime now. We've been working on it. And so I was pretty pumped. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's get some more good stuff out here. Uh, here we are three years later and nothing. So at some point, 1821 just pulled the plug on that. We are to the fragrance that I'm giving away. Again, courtesy of Ryan Beast Mogent Supreme. The fragrance is Lone Medial Extreme from Guerlain. And here is the bottle I'm giving away. And this one's 100 mils. My bottle is only 50. So one of you guys is getting twice as much as I have. Mm. Almond plum, tobacco, cinnamon, and leather. Some of the notes in this scent. This one is fantastic. The Low Midi All line, I think is a great line of fragrances, even though they killed off cologne, which uh, it's still not, I'm still not over that. This one though, Low Midi All Trim is fantastic for cool weather. Again, that richness of plum, that kind of dark fruity sweetness, the tobacco in here really taking things to the next level, the almond tying it together with all the other fragrances in the line. It is great. The big problem with it is that it is really hard to find in the US. So you end up just looking all over the place and coming up with nothing. 
Fragrance Net, do you have it? No. Fragrance X, do you have it? No. Does anyone have it? No. And then when it finally comes in stock, because everyone has been waiting for it, it's sold out like that. So if you have been wanting to pick up a bottle, I have one right here that I'll give away to one of you guys. Stay tuned for that. I'll cover the whole giveaway thing in just a little bit. Next up, let's talk about a little PDM, a little Parfums de Marley. Herod, cinnamon, vanilla, osmanthus, tobacco, and incense. Some of the notes in this scent. This fragrance for me was the first one that really got me into the house. I'm a sucker for tobacco scents, really love them. At the time that I bought this, a lot of people were saying that this is um, like tobacco vanille, like Parfums de Marley's take on tobacco vanille from Tom Ford. That's really not. Spicy, sweet, slightly smoky tobacco with that, that floral edge kind of setting it apart from its contemporaries. Herod is a, a very versatile, compliment pulling fragrance for fall and winter. Great performance here. Good bang for your buck too, I'd say. And of course that classic PDM presentation. For me, I feel like every great house should have at least one tobacco fragrance, you know, one tobacco centric fragrance. And for PDM, that's the one. Let's go with one that's a little bit different. This one is an oud fragrance, technically, because it's in the name, but it also features tobacco prominently. It's Varvados Oud. Look at this bottle, man. Wow, look at that sick chain mail. Oh, it's plastic. Oh man, it looks cheap actually. Oh, dang it. Same house, if you wanted a, a different style that also features tobacco prominently, you could go with Varvados Vintage. This one is fantastic. Can't go wrong with it. So this one has tobacco, cinnamon, incense, oud, and rose. So you do have that more typical oud, rose combination that you're gonna find all over the freaking place, both in designers and niche and indie fragrances, it's it's like you must combine those notes or something. Like you have to sign an agreement with the perfumer before they start working. Uh, I want oud in this. Uh, you gotta include rose or saffron or both then. Otherwise, no oud for you. And that doesn't actually happen, but if it did, it would make sense. Now the smell of Barbados oud is great. And for the price, it's really solid. The only drawback here is that in spite of it having tobacco and oud and these other heavier notes, the performance is actually not that great. Now it's not horrid performance, but it could be, it could be better. Next up, let's talk about a personal favorite of mine, Pure Haban. If you don't want to spend as much money as this is going to cost you, you could also go with Insurrection 2 Wild from Ray and Tradition. This is a clone of this. This smells quite similar to this, only this is much more affordable. Honey, tobacco, cacao, and vanilla, some of the notes in this fragrance. This one, just like Pure Malt, has been a little bit harder to find here lately. I believe that the retail cost of this is supposed to be $89, I think, for a 100 mil. It's right around there, uh, if it's not exactly 89. And at discounters, the price has risen on this fragrance to over $100, so more than retail. And that's because it is not so easy to find lately. It's been sold out at Mugler's website. If you want it, you don't have it, prices are rising. Now, as far as honeyed pipe tobacco designer scents, okay, that is gonna be one of the best ones that you can get. It's, it's very sweet, but it's extremely versatile, massively, massively attention grabbing in a positive way. Big compliment puller. I wore this one to the office very often in the fall and winter time. And uh, it did, it did great. People love the way that smells, whether I was just in the office with coworkers or going out on a business meeting or something like that, crushed it. Fantastic. All right, let's, let's follow up one personal favorite with another, Michael Kors for men. Now, one thing I have to get straight here really quickly is that, well, first off, this is getting harder to find. I know prices on this creeping up. It's not at discounters very often. When it is now, it seems to be tester bottles and they're going for like $80 and they used to be cheap, these Michael Kors fragrances. So that tells me the supply is kind of getting low. So it's one of those things where if you want it or you have wanted it, you might want to get it sooner rather than later. Uh, but this one, Michael Kors for men, does not officially have tobacco as a note. This one, also Michael Kors for men, does. Yeah, I know. They, they had 
my cool course for men in the same bottle basically and then they discontinued it and they made my cool course for men in the same bottle pretty much and remove the tobacco. So basically the Michael cool course for men that you're going to be able to find now easier is this one where you have the writing on the side, Michael Kors for men going up the side of the bottle right here, as opposed to having it right here at the top across the middle. Now that being said, this Michael Kors that you'll be able to find a little easier with the writing up the side, even though it doesn't have tobacco officially as a note, it smells darn similar to the previous Michael Kors for men, which did have tobacco as a note. And really when you smell this one, you can pick up that kind of tobacco feel. So even though tobacco is not an official note, to me, it smells like it's there. There's star anise in here, there's suede, there's elemy, there's incense, it smells like dried fruits in here as well. And of course that tobacco that I talked about previously. Ah oh man, this stuff to me is just so comforting. It's so classy. That sweetness though gives it mass appeal. It is one of my favorite fall time fragrances. I actually have a few bottles of Michael Kors for men both the older and new. It was featured, I believe, in the very first designer fall top 10 that I ever did on this channel. And I still love it today, even though it's kind of going the way of the dodo. Last but not least, Nishane, fan your flames. So we began this list with Tonka, coconut, and tobacco. We end this list with Tonka, coconut, and tobacco, and also rum, yeah alcohol. The Nishane, of course, is going to be higher end than the Banana Republic. Not a huge surprise there. This one takes on more of a tropical feel to it. So even though it would be a tobacco scent that's great in cool weather, and it absolutely is, it hits you with this kind of tropic, fruity, laid back vibeness. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst descriptor ever. Yeah, it's got some laid back vibeness, dude. That's the coconut and rum, man, <laughs> dude. It does though. This one is sweet, but not so heavy while still having great performance. You also have a little touch of woodiness as this one dries down, kind of laying a base for all the other notes to, uh, to project off of. Fan Your Flames is a fragrance that maybe didn't grab me initially when I first got this one in. I thought it was all right, but didn't blow me away. But it certainly is a great change of pace tobacco fragrance, and it does things much more differently than all the other ones here. All right, it's time for the giveaway. Guerlain Lome Ideal Trim, 100 ml bottle, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel, like this video, and leave me a comment below. And all you have to do is say which of these 10 fragrances you yourself would like the most. So the one you'd like to own the most, the one you'd like to wear the most, the one you'd like to smell the most, whatever. Just let me know. And in about 10 days, I will pick a winner with Random Comment Picker. I'll post it on the community tab of my YouTube channel. If you're subscribed, that should pop up on your homepage. And then if you're the winner, just hit me up and I will ship this out to you. So again, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you all the Beast Mode gents and thank everybody who hung out with me until the end. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Good luck.